After talking outside for some time, Edward, Olivia, and Ian returned to the living room. To their shock, they found Madison lying unconscious on the floor. While his father frantically went to go get the car, and his mother ran to find Diana, Ian rushed over to check on his wife. After looking her over, he picked her up and carried her in his arms. Olivia had found her mother-in-law, and the two of them reached the front door in time to watch Ian carrying his wife outside. It was clear that Madison was in worse shape than they had thought. Frowning, Diana didn't say anything as she got into the car with the rest of her family, and they headed to Mercy Hospital. When Madison was admitted to the emergency room, Dr. Garcia, who had helped the young woman in the past, inspected her injuries very closely. As he saw more and more wounds on his patient's body, his frown became tighter, and his facial expression grew more serious. Ian strode off toward his office, leaving the rest of his family to wait in the hallway. It didn't take long for a tense conversation to start. Olivia took the opportunity to plead for her daughter-in-law. Mom, let Madison off the hook this time. She's new to the family. How is she supposed to know how to handle situations like this? While she didn't really like Madison much, she didn't really dislike her either, and she thought the young woman wasn't a terrible fit for the family. Of course, her son had also chosen to marry her, and she supported his decision. The videos we've seen of what happened in the bar had no sound. We still have no idea what Claire and Lynn said, or how Madison responded to them. So much is still unclear about this. Can we please wait until we get more information before we start blaming a member of our own family? Unhelpfully, Edward sat down in one of the chairs that were lined up in a row against the wall and didn't say anything. He thought, I'm sure Olivia and my mother will figure this out. I don't need to get involved. A few minutes later, Ian rushed back over to Madison's room, now dressed in a white coat. He walked by his family with barely passing glance and knocked on the door. Without waiting for a response, he entered the room. Inside, Dr. Garcia was standing at the end of the hospital bed, finishing the notes on his patient's chart. Madison was lying on the bed, sleeping peacefully with an IV in her arm. Ian nodded at his colleague before going to his wife's side. When he saw her sickly, pale face, he felt a throbbing pain in his heart. He stretched out his hand and placed it on her forehead to check her temperature. Dr. Garcia watched him silently for a moment before coming forward and offering him the chart. He then walked out to give them some privacy. Gazing at his wife with a tight look on his face, he felt sick with guilt over the fact that he hadn't realized the state she was in. Since she had been changed into a hospital gown, he could see the wound on his arm with his own eyes. She had a larger wound on the side of her head, which had been hidden by her hair, and her chart let him know that she had injuries on her abdomen and legs as well. He felt anger rising inside him, intermixing with the guilt which he wasn't sure would ever go away. Looking back at his wife, he thought, this is all my fault. Claire and Lynn did this to her just because she's married to me. If I had protected her, if I had handled the situation with Claire better, this would have never happened. While his father seemed content to stay in the hallway, his mother and grandmother walked in. When they saw Madison, they seemed surprised at her condition. Diana softly queried, What happened last night? Ian didn't turn toward them and continued to stare at his wife as he replied, What happened last night was my fault. If I had controlled myself better and handled matters the way I should have, Madison wouldn't have suffered so much. With that, he tried to shift the blame for the incident away from Madison and onto himself. That way, he thought he had a better chance of protecting her. Diana frowned at his response and was silent for some time. Her eyes locked on her grandson. Eventually, she looked at the young woman on the bed and asked, This was your fault? That was difficult for her to believe because she considered Ian to be the most mature of her three grandchildren. He frowned upon Daniel and Cassandra keeping such a high profile and seeking fame. In contrast to his siblings, he was reserved and stayed out of the public eye. Until recently, most people had no idea what he looked like. The idea that he could have caused a scandal of this nature was unthinkable to Diana. Even Olivia looked doubtful at his explanation. Ian turned to look at his grandmother and simply stated, 
Don't worry. I'll handle everything, I promise. Just as he finished speaking, Madison let out a low groan as she started to stir. When she finally opened her eyes, they could see that they were bloodshot, which made the circles under them even more pronounced. Ian's heart ached at the sight, and he quickly reached out to take her hand. Hey, how are you feeling? He asked softly. Even then, he didn't mention what had happened to her the night before. He intended to discuss it with her, but he didn't think it was the right time. Diana took a step closer to the bedside and peered down at Madison. When she saw with her own eyes that the woman was awake, she raised her chin haughtily and crowed, Maybe now you'll learn how to use the Weston family name and how to behave properly. Think about that while you're in here. As soon as she finished, Olivia walked over, leaned in close, and whispered something furiously. She and Diana then stepped into the hallway. On the bed, Madison was quietly lying there, a blank look on her face that gave no clue as to what she was thinking. Ian asked her a few questions to make sure she was all right, and he soon left to find Dr. Garcia. Madison felt bitter and angry as she repeated Diana's words in her head. The Weston family name. She makes it sound like a brand. When she thought about it, the whole family treated their name like a brand. It was a fairly accurate way to describe how people treated them, at least. The family had worked very hard to cultivate a particular image, so they could get the desired reactions out of people. In one short night, Madison had come to understand one thing clearly. While she had married into the Weston family, she wasn't really one of them. Not yet, at least. She had none of the power, money, or influence that they wielded. I bet even Olivia was treated like an outsider at first, it probably took her a while to obtain the power she has now, she thought. To her, the reason for that was very simple. The entire family was under Diana's control. That woman had the final say over everything that happened to the members of her family. It just so happened that in this situation, she hadn't bothered to get all the facts or hear Madison's side before passing judgment, and once she had decided to punish her granddaughter-in-law, no one else knew how to confront her. To make matters worse, Madison had yet to be fully accepted and liked by the family. To a certain extent, they still had a wait-and-see attitude toward her. Even if none of the Westons had ever gotten a divorce, it was entirely possible that they would entertain that option for her. The tradition was important to them, but not nearly as important as their family name. However, no matter how much their attitude had hurt, that wasn't what had bothered Madison the most. She raised the corner of her mouth in ridicule as she remembered how her husband had answered her desperate phone call from jail. Ian, it's getting late. Let's get some rest. Those words were like a curse that kept haunting her, making her unable to breathe whenever she remembered them. Madison didn't tell Zach that she was in the hospital, not wanting to cause him even more worry. Since the Westons already knew she was there, the only person she called was Allie. By the time Allie arrived at the hospital, Madison had already talked to Dr. Garcia and was told that as long as she remained stable for the rest of the day, she could be discharged the next morning. Allie was still brooding over the matter of Madison and Jason getting arrested. She kept wondering if the confrontation would have ever happened if she had done things differently. Madison, what did Ian say about this? She asked with concern. As her best friend, she knew Madison very well. While her physical state could be explained by the altercation the night before, she wasn't sure why Madison looked like a tragedy had struck her. Madison was always honest with her best friend, so she told her everything that had happened after she had gotten arrested. After a minute of silence, Allie shook her head. She carefully looked at her friend before she reached out to take an apple from the tray on the bedside table. She started to slice it while saying, I know you're disheartened by what happened with Ian last night, but you need to talk to him about it. Ignoring him and rejecting him isn't going to solve anything. And I know you're only acting this way because you're angry and jealous. Madison made an offended noise and thought, Of course I'm angry and jealous. I tried to call my husband for help, and he was with another woman. How am I supposed to react? Ever since Claire came back, he hasn't acted like he cares to protect me. Allie knew what her friend was thinking and as she passed the apple slices to her, she remarked, I know you're upset now, 
but that just shows that you care about him. I know your anger will fade soon, and you'll need to confront this. Biting her lips tightly, Madison didn't respond. After a long time, Allie suddenly reached out to place her hand on Madison's arm. She gently continued, When you heard his response on the phone, what was going through your mind? Did you consider telling someone and ruining his reputation? Did you decide you don't like him anymore? Did you consider getting a divorce? Madison stared at her friend wordlessly, her eyes full of stubborn denial. Admit it, you care about Ian and this didn't change that. Regardless of whether Ian has feelings for you or not, you were willing to stay with him when you found out he had proposed to his ex-girlfriend. After he had treated you so horribly last night, instead of vowing to leave him, you've just given him the cold shoulder. I think you were hurt, but you still want him to comfort you and take care of you. Allie paused when her friend looked away uncomfortably. After a moment, she added, Look, I just don't think you should make a hasty decision. At least not before you talk to your husband. As for Lynn and Claire, you shouldn't be worried about them right now. Your first priority is to set things straight with your in-laws, especially that mean old crone who somehow thinks this is all your fault. Madison fidgeted with her hands while she thought over what Allie had said. Her friend was right, even if she didn't want to admit it. She was a Weston now, so she had to prioritize her standing in the family. First and foremost, however, she needed to clear the air with her husband.